story is arguably one of the most terrifying in my collection so far. The haunting of this property began as soon as the family moved in. Eventually the haunting and paranormal activity was so severe that the family had no alternative but to have an exorcism to rid their home of its increasingly dangerous spirits, which had started to physically attack members of the family. Due to the length and details contained in this story, it will be divided into two parts. Part one will be told today. On Tuesday, the 27th of November, 2001, I received a rather unusual call from a resident of a new housing estate in Pelsall. She told me that her house and those of some of her neighbours were haunted. The occupant contacted me to ask if I would write an appeal in Pelsall Times for anyone to shed light on why these properties should be haunted. Very kindly, the occupant invited me to her home to discuss the matter with her. The property was a beautiful large new built house with a double garage. One of the first things the occupant told me was that when she was first viewing her house she noted that in both her garden and those belonging to other houses on the estate there were small headstones leaning up the fences at the bottom of the garden. She wasn't unnerved by this but told me that she had asked the site foreman to reinter the gravestones. However, she went on to tell me that when she and her neighbours moved in, there was no sign at all of the small headstones which had been there previously. As we entered the property, the occupant told me that the paranormal activity had begun as soon as the family moved in. The first incident occurred on the 18th of May 2001 and on their first night at the property. As the occupant's son was arranging his bedroom, he suddenly became aware of someone watching him. As he turned to see, he saw the ghost of a Victorian miner with pickaxe and other tools standing on the landing outside of his bedroom. Her son was so shocked and shaken by what he had seen that he insisted on sleeping with rosary beads thereafter as a form of spiritual protection. In addition to the minor, the occupant went on to tell me about a ghostly night nurse who had become a regular visitor. At the time, it had recently come to light that at least four other properties had experienced the ghost of the Victorian night nurse who appeared to walk across the landings of the properties at night as if she was doing her rounds. Her visits intensified when someone was ill. The occupant told me that the ghostly nurse was a full-body apparition and that she and her neighbours could clearly see the facial features and braided hair of the nurse, her uniform and even the detail of her lace-up shoes. The occupant and her neighbours described the nurse as black or mixed race. The occupant of this property was more curious than troubled by her experience and contacted a clairvoyant who confirmed that the property was haunted by a nurse who was very young when she died. The clairvoyant told the occupant that the young nurse had died of head injuries after she had fallen down some steel stairs and did not realise that she was dead. When I interviewed the occupant, she and her family had had many more strange experiences in their new home. Cold spots were often felt all around the house. Figure-shaped mists were seen and also recorded on film. So prolific was the paranormal activity in her home that the occupant left a camcorder on at all times to capture any paranormal activity. Shortly before my visit, 
a figure-shaped mist had been filmed in the kitchen and passing her patio window. I was told at this time that it was not unusual to feel as if you were being watched. At the time of our interview, I was also told that objects would frequently move, disappear, then turn up elsewhere. As all occupants of the estate had moved in around the same time, they became close. And as they were enjoying a get-together barbecue, it emerged that neighbours were experiencing similar things in their properties, in addition to regular visits from the night nurse. But perhaps the most unnerving thing to mention was that when some of the neighbours were working in their gardens, they had stumbled on bones. The occupant likened the paranormal activity amongst the houses to that experienced in the film Poltergeist. On the surface, however, the paranormal experiences they were all having were harmless enough, although very regular. Armed with the evidence she had given me, I went on to start my research to find out why these houses should be haunted. On the 31st of January 2002, I returned to the property to meet with the occupant and share my findings. By then, the occupants had experienced yet more paranormal activity in their home. To begin with, the occupant led me into her living room, which looked out onto the garden, where she told me that she had seen a man emerge from the floor as if risen from underground. She then took me into the kitchen, which looks out onto the garden, where a figure-shaped mist had been filmed by the camcorder. She then took me back to the living room where I was shown the garden where the figure of a man had passed her patio window. The occupant went on to tell me that recently the phone charger had gone missing for two weeks then inexplicably turned up in the kitchen. Then she led me to the most haunted room in the house, a room that had been locked due to a recent and unsettling event which had taken place over Christmas. She then took me upstairs, where her son's room was. She told me that the nurse had been with them the last couple of nights as her son had been ill. The nurse would walk across the landing and down the stairs at 3.20 a.m. The occupant told me that she could almost set her watch by her. When I entered the room, which is a large room situated directly above the garage. It was quite clear that everything was different in this room. The room seemed to have a very foreboding atmosphere. It felt as if the cold air in the room was creeping around me and taking hold of me. The occupant told me that the room was always freezing cold. The occupant told me that she had even called heating engineers out but had been assured that the heating system was working as it should. In addition to feeling that my ears were covered whilst in this room, what bothered me more than anything was that I was unable to focus on the walls as if there was something moving over or within them all the time. Whilst in the room the occupant told me that the snooker balls on the table moved randomly by an unseen force, which she and other family members had witnessed. However, one of the things that concerned her the most was that her dog, a Japanese Akita, refused to enter the room at any cost. Nothing at all would tempt him to enter the room. As you probably know, it is often said that animals are sensitive to paranormal activity and so perhaps he could see something that neither the owner or myself could see. This however was not the reason why the room had been sealed. The occupant went on to tell me that over Christmas some of her relatives had stayed over and one of the couples had slept in the room which was the only one available at the time. 
The relatives were unaware of the strange incidents that had occurred in the house and so were not concerned about staying in the room. In the early hours of the morning, one of the guests was shocked when he was woken by a freezing cold finger which had glanced across his cheek. After this very invasive incident, the room was locked by the occupant. When the room was reopened some time later, the occupant found a broken china pot, which was in one piece when the room had been locked. Whilst I had been conducting my research, the occupant had been conducting her own investigations, and, in addition to her own findings, she was given a couple of very intriguing yet frustrating leads. She had been told by two different village elders that if I ever told you what once went on there, you wouldn't sleep at night and I wouldn't live there if you paid me. Frustratingly, the village elders never revealed what they knew. With regards to the nurse, the occupant discovered a photograph of her at Goscott Hospital and the name given was Evelyn St John. If you have any further information about this nurse, please get in touch. I would be delighted to hear from you. Please join me next month for part two of this very intriguing story.